Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at this $70 part slot that I picked up from eBay. It contains an assortment of mobile phones, iPhones, a Mac laptop, cases and more and was advertised as some phones for parts or maybe can be fixed with others working and a MacBook that is of unknown condition but it is missing a battery. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at what I got for $70, seeing if any of these devices actually function and see if I can repair them, get them up and running and so on. So let's open up the box and see what I got. Opening up, I'm greeted with some paper and underneath that uh, is all of the items just kind of thrown in there. This is a sort of survivor case for an iPod. Underneath that is an iPhone 3GS, 16 gigabyte in white. There's an iPhone 5 box in here as well. And you can see there's absolutely nothing in that. So it's just an empty cardboard box. Taking off some more bubble wrap reveals more phones and products. This is just some El Cheapo LTE phone. So nothing fancy there, it appears to be water damaged. I doubt that works. There's an iPhone 4 with a shattered back, but a perfect display. There's some sort of brick Nokia phone in here as well that uh, slides up and down. Coming out next is what looks like an iPhone 5S with a very dirty home button. However, it's actually an iPhone SE. There's also an iPhone 3G and 3GS dock in there, an Apple trackpad, which is missing one foot, so that results in it not clicking on one side. However, you can buy a replacement feet for those. There's also two wireless Apple keyboards in here, both of which are the older style with dashboard on the function keys. Next, we've got this iPod Nano third generation, a little Ziploc bag full of screws, and taking more bubble wrap off is a few cases here. The rest of that sort of survivor case and a battery case for an iPhone 4 or 4S. There's also an iPod Nano first generation to come out and then another iPhone 4 with a shattered display and a back which looks in okay condition. Then we've got another sort of Sony Ericsson brick phone and then underneath that we've got an iPhone 3G, also 16 gigabyte in white. And last but not least of the iOS devices is an iPod Touch second generation 8 gig. And the last thing in the box is this MacBook Unibody. So now it's time to test all these devices out. I'm gonna plug in all the chargers and just get these charged up and then we can take a look at them later on. Some of these devices lit up as soon as I plugged them in with the battery flat symbol or the Apple logo. However, this iPhone SE didn't show any signs of life. So cracking it open, I didn't see any obvious signs of water damage or anything else. Taking off the bracket to disconnect the battery, I noticed that the dock connector flex cable wasn't even connected. So it appears somebody has been inside the phone before and attempted a dock replacement and hasn't installed the connector properly because they just haven't put it in the right position. With the flex cable properly installed, I can reinstall the home button cable and then connect the phone to a charger to see if anything happens. Obviously, this totally fixed our issue and the phone showed signs of life and after the battery charged, it booted to the lock screen. However, it's locked with a passcode and has no medical ID. However, all of these phones are from the same person, so I'll hopefully be able to get that contact and be able to easily remove the iCloud account. Righto, so I'm going to test this iPod Nano first generation and plug in the 30 pin cable. You can see the Apple logo faintly appear before the backlight kicks in and the iPod begins charging. Once it is lit up, you can see it is absolutely loaded with music, so that's a bonus and uh, everything seems to be working. Next is the iPod Touch second generation, which is locked and says iPod is disabled connect to iTunes. However, it is running iOS 3.1.2. So all I need to do to fix this is reset the device. However, I don't wanna to have to update it to iOS 4. So I wanted to dump the SHSH blob so I could re-restore with iOS 3.1.2. However, it failed in both Red Snow and iFaith to fetch the blobs. So if anyone has any ideas on how to get the blobs from the device so I don't have to update it when I reset the device, please let me know uh, down in the comments. But for now, this iPod will just stay in the disabled state. 
Moving along, we have this generic sounding ZTE Android phone, which shows no signs of life given the fact that it's water damaged. So this is just junk. Now it's time to move across to the MacBook unibody and take a look at it and see if we can get it running. So you can see from the outside, this thing looks pretty beaten and worn up. It's obvious that this was a kid's laptop and it's got stickers on the front of it for a football team. It's got scrapes and marks all over it. And these things just aren't really built um, for durability, these plastic MacBooks. And you can take a look at the bottom and just see how disgusting this thing looks. I'm actually surprised on how many things I buy that people don't even put any sort of effort in to clean them before they sell them online, which is kind of gross. The bottom isn't screwed on, so taking that off, you can see it has no battery. And I have a strong feeling that the battery had expanded as the back panel seems to be a little bit bent on one side. There was a loose screw located in the MagSafe port, so removing that, I can connect up a charger and power on the MacBook for the first time. As you can see, it boots up successfully. However, it's locked with a passcode. To fix this, I need to restart the Mac holding down the option key, and then I can boot into the recovery mode. Now you can already see this is 10.8 Mountain Lion, but I can open up the terminal and type in the command reset password. Then I can just enter a new password in for the user account, which for me, very creatively put password. And then I can restart the MacBook and log in as the same user with the new password. As you can see, it logs in just fine. And now I can go into the system preferences, users and groups and create my own user account so I can log in and start fresh without actually doing a fresh install of Mac OS. I chose this way as I'm probably gonna be putting an SSD in here, restoring up this MacBook in a future video. So for now, I just wanted to test it out and see what this thing could do and what it needed in terms of repairs. You can see it's a bulk standard mid 2010 machine. With the MacBook up and running, we can put that aside and now it's time to give a few things just a little bit of a clean with some cleaning alcohol and I'm going to start with the iPhone 3G and 3GS dock, the iPhone 5 box, and then move across to some of the iPods because let's face it, we don't really know where these have been and it's always a good measure when you get something that is used to give it a good clean um, just to remove any dirt, grime, or whatever else could possibly be on there. The iPhone SE appears to have candle wax on it. I'm not quite sure how that happens, but it's like hard wax sort of um, stuff. I didn't want to touch it anyway, um, so I tried to avoid that as much as possible. But I couldn't get it with just a sort of cloth. I had to pick at it with a spudger to remove it. So I'm guessing the dock connector had to be replaced because it was spilt in some sort of wax solution. So the interesting things to come out of this $70 part slot include a first generation iPod Nano loaded with music, an iPod Nano third generation with a couple of songs on it, an iPhone 3G. This one is running iOS 3.1.3. However, with the iPhone 3G, you can install whatever iOS version you like onto this, thanks to having no SHSH blobs. There's also an iPhone 3GS 16 gigabyte on iOS 6.1.3. I got two iPhone 4 8 gigabyte models on iOS 7.1.2. They seem to be identical to each other in terms of data and things on them. There's no iCloud, so I can reset those uh, very soon and get those up and running again. There's also a 64 gigabyte iPhone SE Silver with working Touch ID. Currently has iCloud, however, I have contact with the owner, so hopefully I'll get that removed within a couple of days. As for the trackpad, that functions just fine with some fresh batteries. However, it is missing one of the little feet on the bottom, so it won't click properly. However, I can buy a replacement and get that up and running no problem. The two keyboards both connect and function. However, the second one appears to be a little bit harder to type on as I need to hit the keys much harder for them to be recognized in the computer. However, the keyboard and trackpad will be going into my main Mac Pro setup to upgrade over the wired Apple keyboard. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the Tech Lot playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media. I'll keep you guys updated on what happens with that iPhone SE that's passcode locked. Links for my social media is down in the description. 
That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.